Oh, hey, hi. I'm Crazy Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. There is a massive density column above me, and oh yeah, I'm going over today's science file. In today's science file, it says... How thick is the atmosphere? Well, that's an awesome question. So hey, try this. You will need a ruler or a measuring tape. Well, guess what? I'm gonna show you just how thick the atmosphere is. And all you need is one of these tape measures right here. So if we say every millimeter is gonna be about 10 kilometers. So the first layer would only be about a millimeter thick. Now that's it. That's all there would be to that area where there would be clouds, storms, and planes. All right, so if we hit that second layer of atmosphere, it would only make its way till about five millimeters. That's all there would be to the layer that houses our ozone. All right, so now if we move to that third layer, it would only make its way to about one centimeter. That's it. That would be the thickness of the layer of the atmosphere that burns up meteorites as they enter our atmosphere. Now if we move to the fourth layer of the atmosphere, it would make its way to only about 10 centimeters. Yeah, you know, the area where the space station hangs out. Okay, so now if we move to the fifth layer and the final layer of our atmosphere, it would stretch out to about 100 centimeters. 90% of our atmosphere would be nothing but empty space. Empty space. Empty space. Okay, so why does our atmosphere have these different density layers? And where exactly did our atmosphere come from? How did our atmosphere form? Well, don't look at me. Take a closer look at this. Our atmosphere formed from volcanoes erupting carbon gas, which makes up less than 1% of the atmosphere. Argon, which formed from radiation breaking down potassium in the Earth's crust, making up 1% of the atmosphere. Comets slamming into the Earth, delivering gases, which react with solar radiation to make up the 78% nitrogen in the atmosphere. And photosynthesizing cyanobacteria, which release the 20% of oxygen in the atmosphere. The troposphere is made up mostly of water vapor, and the stratosphere doesn't have any of this water vapor. There's more molecules per unit of space in the troposphere, making the troposphere more dense. The stratosphere contains a lot of oxygen, which binds together to form a radiation barrier known as the ozone layer. The mesosphere is made up of the same gases as the two lower layers. However, this layer has extremely fast-moving winds. Fast-moving molecules don't exert as much pressure. Higher pressures push up on lower pressures. The thermosphere is made of the same gases as the rest of the layers. However, because this area is closest to the sun's radiation, most of these gases are supercharged. These gas molecules vibrate faster than any of the other layers do, making this area the least dense of the four layers. The exosphere has the least amount of molecular gas that gravity can still hold in orbit. So few gas molecules that they can orbit the Earth and rarely ever slam into each other. These measurements are average numbers because the Earth's atmosphere is constantly mixing due to heating and cooling, which changes the height of each layer. So now you know more about our atmosphere. You know, being able to see how thick the atmosphere is right at home is why science is so wicked cool.